Hello gamers from around the world. This is Archimedes, the video game enthusiast from Germany with another juicy video. And today's video is about a brief glimpse into the future, into something I expect to be an intensive discussion on social media in a few weeks. And no, I'm not talking about the increase of video game prices, although I must admit, I'm pretty darn happy that those troubled billion dollar companies finally found a way to compensate those extremely expensive development costs of the games we all love so much. I mean Take 2 only saw a growth, not a total revenue, a growth of their revenue in the first quarter of 2020 of only half a billion dollars. Or poor EA only made round about 1.4 billion dollars revenue in the first quarter this year without releasing a game. And how can Activision survive in the future if they only make 1 billion dollars off of microtransactions alone? So how can these publishers pay for the development cost of the annual DLC that they call a new NBA, FIFA or Madden game? Yeah, you're right, they simply increased the video game price for us gamers and we all know many of us are in a very good position this year. Okay, sarcasm aside, I do actually want to talk about something fun, something that I think, like I said before, will be discussed heavily in a few weeks after the Xbox July event, and that is ray tracing. Sony already has shown some games utilizing that technology during their PlayStation 5 game event in June and since the upcoming Xbox Series X will have even more dedicated silicon for ray tracing than the PS5, it will also be included in their games. And I can already see the fanboys going at each other, arguing over who is better and faster and whatnot. And you know as much as I do that there will be a lot of nonsense statements out on social media and we will suddenly see a lot of experts on the subject making comparisons. So I want to use this video to make you an actual expert and elaborate what ray tracing actually is, what sets it apart from traditional lighting solutions in games and how can you actually recognize it and judge for yourself if a game has ray tracing or not. But before we go into the analysis of ray tracing, I want to ask you for a favor. If you watch this video and think you are enjoying what you see, then please consider to hit the like and subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to not miss out on future videos. I put a a lot of work into my videos and I try to grow my channel and this little click from you helps me more than you think. And if you know someone who might enjoy this video, please feel free to share it out. But now let's dive into the lighting technology of the future that is called ray tracing. So I want to start with a short disclaimer. The target of this video is to make ray tracing understandable and comprehensible. That is why I will make some examples that are not meant to be scientific explanations. If you want to discuss ray tracing more in detail and get into the nitty gritty specifics of path tracing, what the tensor cores actually do and so on, then hit me up and we'll discuss it. So what is ray tracing? Ray tracing was actually not developed for video games. Engineers that develop optical systems, let's say for instance a camera lens or or a headlamp of a car have been using this technology for more than 20 years now in order to calculate light in a correct way. And that's why it is so interesting for video games and is considered the holy grail of video game graphics like recently stated by Jason Ronald, head of Xbox program management, cause ray tracing simulates light like it behaves in the reality and includes all physics of light when it interacts with materials. Let me make an example how it works. You want to create an image for your video game. So somewhere you have a camera that will later give you the image for your game. And of course you have a light source that emits the light. Now let's ray trace our image. The sun emits the light in rays and those are traced along the way until the ray hits the camera. Our sun ray hits the first object in the image, in this case the glass and of course some of the light goes simply through it, but part of it is reflected and that reflected light hits another object, our watermelon. The watermelon is not transparent and has a rough surface, so light is scattered into multiple directions on the surface. Some rays will never hit the camera, but others will go toward it. Other rays might be directed back to the glass where they are reflected again to our camera, giving us a reflection of the watermelon in the glass. You see, such a simple scene already is very complex, but it gives an idea what ray tracing is. It is the technology to simply follow all rays coming from a light source, track their interaction with the environment and respecting all physics that happen when the light is interacting with different materials. 
Sounds great, but there is a catch. In order to have a good image, you have to trace millions up until billions of rays. As you can see, every ray emitted by the source is split into multiple rays again when interacting with materials. So in order to do that, you have to have an incredible amount of computational power. That's why, when we look today at PCs, the performance of games goes down significantly when ray tracing is turned on. For instance, if you run games at 60 frames per second, you only have round about 16 milliseconds to compute the millions of rays per image. That's why frame rates typically go down with ray tracing on. Cause if you have for instance only 30 frames per second, you already have round about 33 milliseconds to render your ray traced image. That is the reason why the high-end graphic cards from Nvidia and AMD and also the upcoming consoles have dedicated cores in their APUs to compute only those light rays so to speak. And of course, the more cores slash shaders you have for the task, the better the result. But what sets ray tracing apart from the lighting technologies we have today in our games? Well, today the developers have to tell the camera where the light source is. There are different techniques to do that. I do not want to go into all of them in detail, that would be too much for one single video. But the general idea is that the camera knows where the light source is. So it knows over there is our sun and if you look from this angle onto it, I can see the glass, the watermelon and the reflection of the melon. But the limitations come into place when the camera moves and guess what the camera regularly does when we play games. Let me give you two examples from games that I think have one of the best lighting solutions out there and still have these limitations. For instance, here in this image from the recently released The Last of Us 2, you can see the shadow from the bar in the image is way too thick and other shadows from the grid are missing entirely. Or here in this image from Gears 5, we can see the reflections from the trees and rocks on the ice, but the rock that is covered by the character should also give us a reflection on the ice, but since it is not visible in the image, it is not computed. That by the way is called the screen space reflection, meaning reflections are only displayed for objects that are visible on screen. As you can see, as good as lighting is in today's games, it has its limitations, especially when it comes to shadows, reflections and especially with translucent materials like glass. Like I said in the beginning of this video, Microsoft has baked a lot of ray tracing cores into their next gen console and especially with their so called velocity architecture they can further enhance frame rates. And here comes the thing, even with those dedicated ray tracing cores, performance in games will be reduced when ray tracing is turned on. So for them to have technologies like variable ray shading, sampler feedback streaming etc is an advantage to keep those frame rates up when ray tracing is active when compared to other systems including PC. If Sony will also make use of those features in the PS5 is unclear at the moment. My bet would be if they would use them they would have announced it by now. But regardless of that, in a few weeks Microsoft will have their July game reveal event. By the way, if you want to know what to expect during that event, I can recommend my video on it. It is linked in the description below. And after that event, a lot of comparisons will appear and the fanboys will talk who did it better, Sony or Microsoft. And the PC Master Race is always on another level as well and so on. You know how this goes. But what do you need to look out for in order to recognize ray tracing? We already talked about shadow casts, reflections of non-visible objects etc etc. But the best way to recognize ray tracing is in my opinion self reflections. Let me give you an example here with the new Gran Turismo that got announced by Sony for the PlayStation 5. Self reflection means that an object, in that case the car, reflects itself onto the surface of the car. We also got reflections from non-visible objects here and a realistic shadow cast from complex structures like the rims here in this image. And I know many think now, well these little details I won't notice them during the game anyway. And you are right, during the action you won't pay as much as attention as you do right now. The thing is though, that a scene looks only realistic if everything aligns and subconsciously we all realize that this image looks just damn good without being always able to tell exactly why. And with that I want to come to an end. I hope this video gave you an impression of what ray tracing is and what is possible with it. By the way, with further enhanced ray tracing we can also expect a significant improvement of texture quality cause the way how light interacts with the surface has a huge impact on how we see a surface aka a texture. 
And to this day only the high-end PC market had access to ray tracing, but with the next-gen consoles a lot more devices will support ray tracing now and therefore I expect a significant improvement to the way how ray tracing works in games cause now it is relevant to the mass market. But enough from me, what do you think? Is ray tracing something you look forward to? Are you excited for the technology or do you think it is a waste of computational resources? Let me know in the comments of this video below or hit me up on Twitter. I always love to discuss gaming with the community and I share a lot of opinions on my channels. So if you want to talk gaming just hit me up either here on YouTube or on Twitter. And please do me a favor, if you enjoyed the video then don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button as well as the notification bell and consider sharing this out to other gamers, I would greatly appreciate it. But for now, thank you very much for watching, I see you the next time and game on!